All right. All right, for the ones that are already here, I think we should just start so we are not taking uh, two hours of time from uh, from Lina and Mark. Um, first of all, of course, Lina and Mark, welcome and thank you for uh, for joining. No problem. Um, very, very much. Um, awesome that you took the time to do it. Um, always happy, uh, you know, that uh, to organize these things and to hear different opinions from uh, from some top players. So uh, thank you for joining. I'll uh, introduce you shortly, and of course, ladies first. And uh, please, Lena, correct me if I'm wrong, if I miss something or if I say something totally wrong. Yeah, you correct me. Yeah. Um, so Lena, Lena Kjærsvold uh, is born in Denmark, 27 years young, if we can say like that. No, 26. Oh, 26. Oh. But soon 27. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. See, I knew that. I knew that. Um, plays ladies singles. Um, highest BWF ranking. I will ranking is number 16, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. um, best results. Uh, she won the women's singles uh, in the first um, European Games in Baku. Um, and she won bronze uh, four years later in Minsk. And um, I can, there's a very long list of several mm -hmm. international challenge tournaments, uh, mm -hmm. many European mixed uh, team championships that you've won with Denmark and also Yuba Cup. So I don't know all the years, but no. uh, a long list of uh, big accomplishments. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Then we have Mark. I hope Mark Kaljau, born in Holland, uh, my home country, <laughs> uh, 26 years old. Yes. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Also, right handed plays men's singles. Uh, highest BWF ranking is 25, if I'm correct. Yeah. Also, here, quite an impressive list. Won uh, Orlia Masters twice in 2017 and 2018. Uh, won Austrian Open in uh, 2019, if I'm also correct. And also, Kharkiv International. European um, silver with the uh, Thomas Cup. Um, and of course, not to forget uh, the All England semi final, I think <laughs> that, uh, is high on your list as well. Yes, that's true. <laughs> National champion, also. I think, yeah, <laughs> there's also many, many other things to say, but I think I captured most of the things. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh. Definitely. Oh. All right. Um, yeah, as I said, I think we should just, uh, you know, start shooting questions, not my questions. Uh, the players have sent me a lot of questions. And uh, we'll just start with some very easy ones to get into it. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually, um, uh, let me see. Um, yeah, just about uh, daily life in, in general. Um, and Johanka and Lea would like to know, what does a normal day look like for you? Like with training, uh, massage, whatever studies, I don't know, of course, but how, how is a day for, let's start with Lina. How does a normal day look for you? Um, a normal day looks like I got the training in the morning, um, either at eight or at 10 o'clock. We are changing, we train only singles together and then the doubles are training together. So we are changing around with the, um, with the times. And then probably that would be, yeah, Physio, massage, uh, meeting with the mental coach, uh, talking with the coach, video meetings can be. Uh, and then there is either a badminton in the afternoon, uh, a weight session or a physical session. And then it depending on the day. So normally a training in the morning and in the afternoon. So basically very, very well filled, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it the same for you as well? Uh, almost. Um, we have actually also uh, between our training, also a technical training between. So the most of the time it's now changing around because, yeah, I'm living also in Denmark and also in the Netherlands. Uh, but um, a normal day is most of the time we start training at 9.30 and then till 11.30. Uh, then we have a couple hours of rest, take some uh, lunch somewhere and then uh, we start a technical training. Uh, that is just one hour, uh, one and a half hour, just the most of the time still standing or maybe one corner. And then after that, we will do weights or uh, condition training, physical training. And for sure, between that, it's the same with Lena. Sometimes we got massage, physio, but it's depending a little bit how your body is and uh, what you uh, planned. But we got two times 30 minutes massage in a week. And yeah, yeah the physio is depending uh, how your body is feeling. Of course. 
um, quick questions where now I'm thinking of something again. Um, do you guys also study or are you just only full-time uh, badminton? Uh, full-time badminton right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Me too. All right, both. Okay, all right. Then uh, to add on to, to that part, uh, Johanka would really like to know what part of practice you like most or what is your favorite part of practice? And that can be, of course, anything. I would say break, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So um, you want to start this one? Uh, maybe it sounds a little bit weird, but I really like to train really hard. Um, actually, maybe just to run, run around without any plan. Uh, just <laughs> working hard and sweat as most as I can and just yeah not thinking about anything uh, I really like that and uh, just searching for the limit how, how far you can go with each other and with your training partner and yeah if I'm just then after the training so done that I just yeah almost cannot stand up that is the most nice feeling for me to uh, finish the training yeah all right and you Lena same or totally different <laughs> No, I also really like to train hard, uh, like Mark, and uh, we sometimes, or mostly every week, depending on the um, which period we're in, we have a multi session. Yeah. Um, from can be from 600 to 1,000 shuttles, um, which is really hard, but it gives you a good feeling uh, after um, because it's just you. Um, doesn't matter if you make mistakes or the shuttle is just still coming over. Um, and yeah, I really like that to see if you can push yourself further. Um, so yeah, like Mark, I, I also enjoy a, a hard training. <laughs> so it's a little bit about pushing the limits uh, for you yeah, guys. Exactly. Also, you know, to be ready if that happens in matches and tournaments as well, that you're yeah. ready for yeah. it. All right. Yeah. Um, when, did you, when did you guys decide to go professional? Um, I, I don't know if, of course, for how long you've studied, but there must have been a point where you said, okay, now I'm, I don't know, 21, and now I'm going to go pro. Um, mm -hmm. did you just, was that easy to decide? Um, I think for me, it actually already started in the, in the lower school, yeah. um, where my coaches asked if I also could get a, a morning off from, uh, from the school. Yeah. Um, and the school had nothing to do with sports, so we had to go to the director and ask, okay, can Lena be gone for these two hours in the morning because she needs to train? Yeah. Um, and then it started that go from there, it just got, uh, got more and more. And then when I was 18, I moved from Aarhus to Copenhagen to train at the, the National Center, and that's uh, three hours away. Yeah. Um, so when I moved there, I had two years to finish my... Um, my student uh, exam yep. um, and then after that it was completely professional but I think it started before uh, already when I was in school All right. um, but I think it's yeah. a little bit the same you just it's just building up uh, so you start first they say like okay maybe some coaches will say like hey you're maybe a little bit good you want to train one more mm -hmm. training and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then yeah <laughs> you don't realize that you are really good or something like that you are just enjoying and for me it was when the national team uh, in the Netherlands you can already start the national team when you're under 13 or under 15 yeah. and then you are in 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 the center or you can train one time in Papano in Arnhem where I'm still there, uh, where I'm still there training now. So yeah, then you realize, okay, you are you are better than the rest. But I think when you realize, then you that is coming maybe around when you're 16 or 18, then you realize, mm -hmm. okay, this is what I want to do, and yeah. this is I really want to go. Uh, yeah, this is my future, and uh, I want to continue. And actually, to be honest, it's changing now all the time because when I was younger, when I was 18, then I changed, okay, this is the perfect life. And now you, st you still think this is a really nice life, but you're also going to look a little bit more far away than now. Uh, first, I didn't think nothing at all uh, about my future. And I was thinking this is the life, but now it's changing. So it changed also with a little bit your age, I think. <laughs> it, does. it is, definitely does. I think, you know, I'm asking because, of course, there's a lot of young players uh, that mm. are listening at the moment. And they're, of course, still in school. So it's, it's also, I'm guessing, in Denmark, uh, and maybe also in Holland nowadays, it's, it's maybe easier to balance, you know, and there's mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more cooperation from schools 
also to to make that happen because it's of course maybe you want it but maybe sometimes it's not uh, not possible so it's uh, you know it's also for them to hear that it's possible but maybe of course not in the situations where they are at the moment oh so it's sometimes no. you have to be lucky in uh, in some combination with school uh, we know that we have in the hague that's a place in the netherlands we got more lucky over there than another place in the netherlands with school and stuff like that yeah. But I think you, if you are really having kind of plan, I think you can always make something out uh, to train more or something like that. There will be people who are going to help you. I think yeah, mm -hmm. if you show that you're willing to want this, then mm -hmm. I think there is always coming something on your, on your path. There's yeah. always a way, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to find a way, there's always a way. If you find exactly. a way, people. And uh, for sure, also still when you are young, it is important that you finish the school so you also have something if badminton doesn't work out or if you get injured or something yeah it's not when you are 12 you cannot do anything else than badminton it's, uh, it's still important to to mm. have something and as mark say if you're willing to do it you can find a way and for sure yeah. it will also work out that you can do yeah play badminton as much as you want but still also do your school uh, finish. Yeah, I totally agree. It's of course important to finish your, finish your study and if you can find ways to do more if you want to. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll pick up on a remark that Mark said. Uh, so, so what is next then? <laughs> if you have been thinking about it. I'm just curious now. Uh, I may... uh, still at the moment, I'm still thinking to believe uh, that I can still go for sure for your for more years and goes for, mm -hmm. for the other Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, but you are thinking more just about also your family or where you're going to live, what you're going to do after. Um, and uh, yeah, what I say, when you're just in the beginning of your career, you think, yeah, this is, this is it. And uh, maybe if I'm stopping in 10 years and we'll be fine. But now you find out it's yeah. not that easy, and especially also in our countries where it is not that big and you're not earning like football players in the Netherlands then you know that you have to find something work. Um, so you are more thinking about that. But yeah, one thing for sure, I'm still enjoying it so much. So uh, I'm not thinking about anything else now. You should, you should, still young. What about you, Lina? Have you thought about that? Um, yeah, for sure, I'm thinking about it. And I think also after Mark and I got together, you think a little bit more about it because living in two different countries, yeah, you also maybe have to, yeah, have a plan what to do after you hmm. not want to play anymore yeah. and yeah you still have to think about that even though that i hope that i got some more years uh, in me yeah. um Definitely. so for sure i'm thinking about it and yeah but i'm not sure yet what exactly it uh, exactly what it's gonna be i think it also depends um yeah if i have to move to uh, another country yeah. or yeah, we are more thinking about it now Let's yeah yeah, so I think there's more things, um, yeah, that have to be in place before you maybe really can make a decision about what what to do. Because yeah, it's not that I have something I really want to go in this direction. Um, I'm yeah. trying to to figure out uh, what could be fun to do after uh, yeah. you one day. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, you still have. Uh, I'm also convinced, to be honest, that you have <laughs> more years left. Uh, you're 26, so come on, uh, that's yeah. still very young. Yeah, um, exactly. And of course, those thoughts come more the older you mm. get. That's also yeah. normal. Um, what are the differences then between Denmark and Holland? If you you can only name two. If you can name two big differences between Holland, can be in favor of Holland or can be in favor of Denmark. It doesn't matter. Um, um, to be really honest, first <laughs> I was thinking that um, that Denmark <laughs> is is the country in uh, in the badminton world because yeah I think if we are coming from small countries uh, like Netherlands and also Slovakia that you think like okay everybody's in Denmark there's a perfect system and stuff like that 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 is how it is but to be really honest I think if you compare one thing, I think our system in the badminton world, and then I'm only talking about the system, I think that it's actually better than in Denmark. Um, and our uh, things in Papano is actually, I think, way better than in National Center in uh, in Denmark. Um, but I think- But I think in Denmark, we got more badminton clubs. Yeah, exactly. What, yeah. For example, yeah. you can find a, find a club Everywhere yeah. within- yeah, the, le the level in coaches, the level in coaches yeah. and the level in players, it's just better in Denmark. That's why you, when you start a club, 
yeah, if you're training in a club in Denmark, then you have already a good coach and a good level. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you probably also know that you did in the Netherlands. It's not like that. Uh, so <laughs> Different. Yeah. No. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in general, our club level is just a little bit too low if you want to make it far, more far away. Yeah, uh, I just think the tradition in Denmark for badminton is so good that it makes up for maybe some of the other parts if you compare Papendal to our national center, then there is a big difference. Yeah. Uh, the Papendal is, I would say, way better with mm. all the facilities and everything. Yeah, exactly. But the tradition in Denmark is just so big that that's why Denmark can still have a high level yeah. um yeah, world class level yeah. yeah but that's yeah. that's true of course i was also there but yeah i agree it's of course the uh the the systems are different but uh yeah. the tradition of the clubs is crazy you you can just you know go whenever you want and there's always yeah. sports there and always clubs people everywhere play, yeah. so it's, it's really yeah. cool you know yeah. all right like real, real badminton clubs everywhere yeah. just yeah. badminton courts uh, exactly no gymnastic yeah. uh, lines or anything just yeah. pure badminton holes. Pure badminton <laughs> lines. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely true that's definitely true all right um and, and we'll go a little bit in a different part and this is a little bit about the the mental or emotional part if you can say it like that mm -hmm. um there was a question from marianne and uh, natalia uh with first the question was of course if you have a mental coach and if you have how important is it and how does it influence uh your performance on court um yeah i have some in kind of some periods a mental coach so um i don't have one coach who is always be here but we can fix something with nsa and sf that calls uh and that then we can get a coach or a mental coach in that way. Um, and I think it is extremely important, um, especially when I was a little bit younger, I was thinking I'm quite okay, the mental part, but I still think you, everybody can improve a lot in that. Yeah. And I think it's uh, a subject where not a lot of people think about it and not a lot of people talk about it. Yeah. Um, and I think, in some way, our my coach Jonas is actually also a kind of a mental coach. He's really uh, working only with me and Joran. So he has also all the time to do that. Um, and I think when you talk a lot with him about how you're feeling, what is thinking on court and stuff like that, that's also already a little bit working with the mental coach. But I still think a professional mental coach who is outside the badminton is in, uh, yeah, I can recommend it everybody. I think it is uh, really important. All right. Uh, so everybody, I uh, hope you get that uh, in the heads. So uh, you also know that I'm also know a little bit what I'm talking about. So Lina, your opinion on that as well, please. Yeah, uh, I have a mental coach. Um, the Federation or Team Denmark, what it's called, um, the sports organization here in Denmark, they're offering a mental coach um, for, for us. And um, yeah, I see her yeah maybe once a month or something and i also think that it's really important um i think also over the years i found out how important it actually is to have your mind uh, in place um because you can be so good in everything physical technical tactical uh, everything on court but if you your mind is not in the right spot when you are playing then everything else actually doesn't matter. Uh, if you cannot play the right way, if you cannot find a way, ways out of uh, so solutions or hard periods, um, yeah, you have to be mental tough to to get all the way. Mm. Yeah. Would you uh, would you both? Um, I'm, I'm guessing the federation uh, is supporting uh, you in this sense. Uh, would you still do it if, for example, that's maybe a really weird question, but would you still do it if, for example, the Federation would not uh, mm -hmm. cover the, con the, the expenses for it? Would you then say, listen, it's worth it, so I'm going to do it myself anyway? Uh, I, I think, think I would do it, yeah. yeah. I, I think, think it's so. in, uh, now, those days, I would do it for sure. But when, <laughs> what I said, I, when I was younger, I still, um, I was I was a little bit, how do you say that? I was a little bit... Uh, yeah Stop yeah stuttering in a lot of things and i was thinking that i was quite good in things and i think when people think you are good in something maybe you are actually not that good in that mm -hmm. and i think you yeah what i said i think you you in those things it is the same like your badminton training you have to get 
you have to get it actually in my opinion if you want to make it to the it doesn't matter what your goal is but if you want to make it uh, there then you have to be also get a mental coach or somebody where you can feel uh, where you can say things in an uh, in a trust way so uh, i think that's also more important if you cannot if you don't have that much money because it is a lot of money you also uh, if you have to do it by yourself then you mm -hmm. have to find a person where you think okay yeah. that can be your coach your physical coach or something like that but find somebody where you can also talk and be yeah be uh if you're insecure about it just be honest to yourself and also to the one who you're gonna say it i think mm -hmm. yeah do you think it would have uh, you of course you you said that you uh, started a little bit later with it do you think it would have made a difference if you would have started let's say when you would have been 18 while you were stubborn i guess as we say them <laughs> yeah yeah i think so because yeah what i said it is more um, you're gonna learn some things and um you also have to be honest in that moments when you're going to talk. Uh, sometimes I said to myself, I'm not nervous. Uh, I just see it match for match, for instance. And but you deep inside, you know that you are nervous and you don't want to talk about it because you don't want to say that you're you're kind of weak in things. But you can also be honest. And I think with those people, um, yeah, what I said, it is still different stage where you are all the time. But uh, when you're younger and you are in talent, there's coming a lot of pressure on you or when you're not making it directly to the seniors. Yeah. It is going to be a hard time. If you play all those international tournaments and you're losing all the round, all the rounds and you have to travel to the whole Europe. I think we both did it. Yeah. It's not really nice. And if you're sitting alone in your room, then it's really nice to have a coach or a mental coach to talk with them in that mm. period. And I think that would improving you way better actually than I was doing it now by myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit like a safety net, as you can also say, you know, sp spill your yeah. gut a little bit like to someone who is maybe a little bit more independent and a little bit more far away from, from your careers yeah. in that sense. Um, Milan had an interesting question. Milan, I hope that I'm uh, asking it the right way. Uh, the question was from Mark, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, Mark, uh, Milan would like to know if, um, if you're, for example, the underdog in a match, and you're closing down or you're getting close to victory how do you how do you control your how can you say your emotions if you can say mm. like that or maybe you don't see yourself as an underdog maybe you see you have a completely different perspective am i saying that right milan i'm just quickly looking at you <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah yeah it's fine yeah? yeah correct me if i'm wrong i eh? no worries um yeah, that is actually, I think, also for everybody who's playing the most hardest part. If you are the underdog, and for sure I'm feeling that because sometimes you put yourself in an underdog position is really nice in my... Because if you go to play Asia or other players in Europe and you, and you put yourself in an underdog position, it's actually nice because then you can play free for your feeling. But if you coming to a point where you think like, hey, I can win this, that is the most shitty point because then you cannot play free anymore. Yeah. Um, and what I learn in some matches, what I'm doing then, if I get to that point, um, go back to the, to your basic, what is, what is feeling fine for you. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it is feeling fine just to play everything in the middle and just play everything just upwards. If you have an okay defense is, but just do something else and not keep going what you are doing already. Uh, because <laughs> you know if you can get going to that point then you know that you you if you got that feeling you're not going to win it if you're doing the same thing in my eyes so you have to change something in in that way and then you say to yourself okay i'm going to play only smash skill if that is possible or smash net and i think you have to find something and also say to your coach in that way who's sitting behind the court hey i have to change something because there is something going and um, that's what i said i think the, you're, you have to be honest also to yourself, like, okay, now I'm going to do something what is different than what I did before. And that is just play the rally then, or just going to make some go full on the surface because you need the point to do something else. And I think that's the most important to uh, change in that period. Yeah. A little bit like you did at the Old England in the second set of your semi final, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just go for it. Yeah. Who cares? Just try something different, go full in and see wherever it ends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you play the same, then what I said, you're going to lose because what you said, you are a little bit already an underdog. Yeah. So I think 
that's also what Jonas teach me. Uh, I don't know if everybody know him, but Pearson, uh, Joachim. He, yeah, Joachim Pearson. He was he's also coming there sometimes to our training. And awesome. if one guy was mentally really really good, then it was him. He was also in weird in some way, but he also <laughs> said, Mark, do do some things when it is 60 0 but the what the other is not expecting. Step yeah. into the surf or do something else because. If you're doing it at one all, you already show, okay, I'm going to do that. But show it on the moments where it is, and scary, but just do it. Because then also your opponent's going to gonna be scared. And it's the same if you just think I'm going to win it, but you feel it is going out of your hands. Just do something else what you have to do at that moment, I think. Yeah, be brave, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, play, you played amazing, by the way. I've watched it. Uh, it was awesome. <laughs> I, really, I really enjoyed watching it. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, Lina, there's also a question from you, uh, from Julia. Um, she's saying, before you won all these big titles that you already have, <laughs> uh, what was your motivation, you know, to keep going, training, fighting, all these things? Um, I think from when I was young and started playing, I had a really good coach who was really into me and said to me, you have a big talent and I think you can really become something. And I think that just has been in my mind all the time that, okay, then you win one more title and then you win this tournament or, and then you just got more, yeah, more into it and yeah. you can see, okay, I can go further and I can go further than this. And it's also to have goals and to see those goals uh, coming true. Uh, I like that. I also, I'm really, um, you know, also perfectionist and I, I like to, yeah, challenge myself and I want to go for it. Um, so I think, yeah, winning I just, is almost also an addiction almost, yeah. you know, if you win, it gets yeah, yeah. so much motivation mm -hmm. to keep going and nothing is good enough. Yeah. I think also for you, if yeah. you just win more title, then you mm -hmm. think, okay, then I want to take the next step. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I also think is that I really enjoyed like uh, training. I really enjoyed coming to training. Uh, yeah, when I was young, it was I was always in the hall. Um, yeah, yeah, sitting and waiting for that I could train, and hopefully I can join the training after. And yeah, yeah. the more training, the better. And you know, all those yeah hours in the hall and all the fun. I think uh, that just made that. Yeah, I like playing badminton. And when someone is telling you, okay, you can also become really good, then yeah. you can watch you. Then you also start seeing. Yeah, more out of just the training, but okay, then I can win this and this and this. And then you also want to go for it and yeah, of course. see of course. if it can happen. Yeah. I think it's also, uh, um, I don't know if you guys agree, but I think it's also, it comes down to that you have people around you that also believe in you and, you know, state that you, you have the potential and yeah. that you're doing good, setting those goals, seeing that you're achieving goals in order to, you know, get further and further mm -hmm. in your careers. Um, I think that's uh, I think that's really important. Um, yeah, yeah, that you also that someone is telling you, okay, if we do this and this and this, I think and I know that you can. Yeah, become so much better, and then you also get the belief, and you know someone is believing in you, and you also want to show them and want to show yourself. Okay, I also think that yeah, this can happen. Um, yeah, the confidence you get from it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, Lina, there's one more question for you, also from Milan. Uh, he says um, you're at the moment the number two uh, Danish player on the world ranking, and of course, there's always pressure from younger ones. N not that you're old, but there's always pressure coming up from the younger ones, of course. Um, he's asking how you look at these facts. Does it keep you motivated to, you know, try and you train harder? Uh, or is it frustrating that you don't have that number one spot? Um, how, how do you see that? Um, yeah, for sure. A couple of years ago, I was yeah, always number one in Denmark. Um, and then Mia started coming from behind up and up and up, um, doing really, really good. But I actually only think that that was really good because um, when I was uh, young and coming into the Federation, yeah, Tina was stopping. So yeah. there was no one um, and it was really difficult to, yeah, to see, okay, in which footsteps should we go? Uh, because yeah. then the group of us, we were the best. Yeah. Um, 
And then I think it's really good when I was, yeah, number one and someone was coming, yeah, we could always, we can always push each other. Yeah. And the same now when, uh, yeah, Lini Christoffersen, Julie Daval, who is coming from, uh, from the younger now, um, we are always pushing each other in the training and it makes everyone better. And it also makes them better that me and I have been a little bit higher and they could see up to us. Yeah. And then they are coming and for sure, in the end, everyone is also getting better. Um, yeah. But you can also see that for sure it's hard, but it also competition also wants you to, yeah, be better, do better, yeah, is, yeah strive for more. So yeah. I think competition is, is always good because yeah. if there's no comp competition, you also have nothing to, yeah, compare yourself. Okay, but every day in the training, there is, you know what you also gonna go for. Yeah. Um, Exactly. So I, I just think that it's good that we have a lot of really good women singles and I think there's just coming more um, and compared to what was some many years ago, there was maybe yeah. only one, yeah, every 10 year or something. Yeah, and, so and now we have, yeah, two, three, four. So um, I, I think also there, if I can add one more thing in that, I think maybe it's a little bit different for me, but what I also was feeling in the last uh, now when I'm getting a little bit older than when I was younger I really don't want that my concurrents getting better actually mm -hmm. in some way so if yeah. they were losing the first round yeah it's really hard to say but I was actually feeling nice because they are losing <laughs> um, but I really believe and that's also what Lina said and I think that is a huge thing but you have to change your mind a little bit also in training by you need each other mm -hmm. yeah. and um you need even if you don't like him or you don't or you don't he is doing better than you at the moment it will be better for you also if he is getting better um and i think you have to really learn that and try to keep yourself saying to yourself like okay he's doing good then i have to work harder if he's doing two minutes then i'm good at doing two Two minutes but even harder if the coach wants that so yep. in that way you're going to show it but not in a way like don't feed uh, not going to feed good or something like that or want to score directly points to show the coach like hey i'm better because yeah. i think it, everybody is doing that sometimes to see like hey coach can you see this or something like in that way but i think you, you have to be really honest to yourself okay did i train good for me first of all but also for the other because then you can step up yeah <laughs> Yeah, it works both ways, right? You yeah, can exactly. uh, you can take it in a bad way, but then nothing happens, uh, or you take it in a good way and you can try and improve yourself. Yeah, yeah, because if your concurrents or not your con con concurrents, but also your training partners, if they get better, you also get better, mm. yeah. and then they get better, and then you get better, and then you can always push each other to go higher. It's always good to have a few, uh, if, if it's always hard, if you're by yourself, if you have uh, three, four uh, that mm -hmm. are fighting for maybe one or two spots, uh, yeah, that's yeah. better, but you have to fight for it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, there's a question from Martina. Um, when you are at the bit, this is for the both of you, by the way, uh, when you are at a big tournament and you, you face uh, someone um, that you know is a good player, but you're still slightly the favorite. How would you then go into this match? Do you manage that? Uh, uh, I think we all know if you have then that high level stress, you know, where you go in and where you know, shit, I really have to make this one. How mm. do you handle that? It can also be a little bit anxiety, of course, in that sense. I think, yeah, then we're also coming back to maybe the mental part, what we were talking about. Um, yeah that I try to talk with my mental coach also about trying to go into every match the same way. Um, I'm going for my game plan, going for what I have to do in the match, what I have to be prepared for. And after that, I look at the, the opponents. Okay, what are they doing? What should I be um, aware of? But yeah. I always try to go into every match, no matter who I'm playing, with the same game plan of what should I do what yeah. is it that I'm good in in my game and what is it that I want to, to show in the match? Yeah. And of course, you still have the little feeling in the back, okay, I'm the little favorite. I have to win. Um, what if I lose? Yeah, it's there, but then the mental part is there and then you have to try not to listen to it, to put it away 
and focus on your game, focus on what you have to do, because it shouldn't be any different if you're going to play someone that is way better than you. Yeah. But the hard part is still to go in and play when you're actually a little bit more favorite because you think you have to win. Yeah. But you just have to try to, yeah, to put that away and focus on what you have to do. Sometimes it goes good. Sometimes it can also go in, in the wrong way. Or the other one is just playing so good that, okay, heads off, nothing to do. But if you just try your 100% all the time uh, to focus on what you have to do, um, then I think you cannot be disappointed after. Yeah, I agree. And for you, Mark, is it a little bit the same? Um, yeah, it's almost exactly the same, but I am more a type who pump myself a little bit up uh, before my match and prepare myself. Yeah, it sounds maybe a little bit weird, but I pump myself that I'm going like in an arena, like a gladiator, just to pump myself <laughs> up, like I'm standing here yeah. and to, <laughs> to give everything what I get. Um, and, you know, yeah. If you are tired, if you have pain somewhere, just put it away and just feel myself. Um, and that's for every person different. For me, it's a gladiator, but it can also be someone else. But if you pump yourself up to that motivation to like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And, then, and you also, for sure, what Lina said, go with your plan. But I really yeah, feel... I hope you have a plan and not go yeah, wrong, just like a but, gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> but I really feel that you... Um, you, if you also, what I also do, I prepare like that and I also prepare already the match in my head a little bit. What is coming? Um, what is before? If I'm nervous, can I, I just gonna close my eyes and s say, okay, maybe I was doing lob. Maybe there's some drift. Maybe there's some, I just, just going like a movie already. The visual, visual Yeah. I don't know how. Uh, yeah. Visualizing. <laughs> yeah. Visualizing. Yeah, exactly. So just, just to, the whole match already in your head. And if you also say, okay, that's a good shot of your opponent. If you watch some video, yeah, then you know they're going to hit down on you. But if you already prepare that in your head, yeah. then yeah, you are being more ready there. And mm -hmm. I really believe, and that's also what they say already in some podcasts and mental coaching. I really believe if you prepare yourself already before what is coming, you get so much better um, okay. in it. And that's the same sometimes when training, my coach Jonas said, just doing sometimes at home, 100 time your foreign defense or your back end defense because it's the same movement only without shadow but it is going to be better in the in the term somewise on the training so i think you have to also in that if you're going to be nervous or if you're going to be under dark and stuff prepare the thing in your head because then oh that feeling i already knew that and then it's coming in your body i think yeah, that is a huge thing what i learned in the past years yeah, it's it's a, it's a good way, of course, visualizing a certain uh, a certain way or what can happen in matches. I think yeah, exactly. it's also, you know, it's uh, even if you play better ones, it's of course the respect is always there, but you mm. don't. It's not too much respect, you know. Nothing. It's only one racket and two legs also on the other side, so there's yeah. nothing different, you know. No, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, that's 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 good to know. I think the visualizing part is uh, is a good one, and I think. Um, uh, that's also, uh, you know, a, a big thing that you can see that for everyone it is a little bit different how you prepare for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll go a little bit into tournament related questions. We have a few here as well. What was your best match ever? Easy question. We start with the easy one. <laughs> it's actually an hard one for me. <laughs> best match ever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Honest, I think I've, I I don't have one specific match, but I think sometimes, and it is weird, but the best matches is when you play bad and you're winning. In my eyes, because it just get a nice feeling if you play bad and you're just winning some matches and you just came through, maybe yeah. def defend a little bit the match point, and then you know for my feeling you're gonna play better in the next tournaments, in the next matches who are upcoming. Okay. Uh, yeah, in that way, I think. All right. I think it's a little bit different for, uh, from me. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the best, best matches is when you, yeah, you feel the flow in the whole match. Um, yeah, you feel nothing can stop you. And uh, yeah, all the shots are just on the line and just everything, oh, your movement is just yeah. working and everything is just, yeah, going as you were hoping for. Yeah, like, like you're really in the zone. As you yeah, can yeah like in that. the zone, exactly. Yeah. I think that is, that is, a, the best match for me <laughs> yeah. and i think yeah 
yeah yeah that's uh <laughs> i think that's the best match <laughs> okay all right yeah so being on the phone yeah that's also a specific one or um yeah it can also just, be or just yeah. how uh, we see the best match yeah how you see it but also ah, okay. your best match but uh if we talk about this then but how, then of course the question i already know a little bit uh, maybe from the players who come but how do you get to that zone how how do you then get there or do that does it just happen i think it doesn't just happen no i think it's a little bit also what mark talked about before with the uh, visualization and you prepare yourself you try to focus on what you have to do not about uh, how many people is in the hole yeah. who's playing on the court beside but that you just really try to get yourself in that zone um, yeah. and you prepare yourself mentally you confident um, you actually you're taking it a little bit easy because you know yeah nothing can stop you and you are you have a lot of confidence that all your training and everything has been going well you know what you can do believe in yourself um, i think if you do all of those stuff then yeah the zone and the um, yeah but coming to the per but coming to the perfect zone or that zone that is almost impossible yeah i think in a way it, like it, how many how many you're training or how many matches yeah. you play it, you're yeah. not gonna, and you also have to accept that I it think. happens maybe one out of 10 maybe or 20 10, something like that but 20 matches and i think you have to also accept that because mm. otherwise if you always think like oh in that match yeah that was so <laughs> such amazing and that's then all the other matches are going to be shit mm -hmm. because you're only thinking about that match and i think that that is a huge thing what you also have to accept you cannot play every match on your top level no. and that is how it is yeah. and that is why you have to try also when you are at 95 percent or at 90 percent, just try to win it but you also have to accept you cannot win everything we yeah. are not like like uh, even that's why why i got more respect even also from a motor or something like that but also for a fader or an adult, they're winning all the time, no matter what. And I think that is yeah. actually insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's also no perfect preparation. I think uh, oh. you put it both right on the spot. The, the times that you actually play awesome, you can count on one hand. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, maybe on yeah. two fingers, maybe. Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen that often. But then when it happens, you know, and you always will have that feeling. So you always have something to go back to and yeah. say to yourself, listen, I remember that time. Yeah. And you have that feeling and that confidence from that time that you actually felt like you're really in the zone. Yeah. And sometimes you don't expect accept it because sometimes your preparation is so good and you think like this is going to be the tournament and <laughs> everything was yeah. fine. Uh, I'm feeling good. There was nothing happened. Not not with your family. Yeah. And then and then you play like shit, if yeah. I can say it like that. And then something when, when you have a lot of concern about your family. I know that my mother was getting sick. Um, and then I play a tournament and I was actually only thinking about her. But if I'm looking back now, I play one of the best tournaments in my <laughs> life. And because you are thinking about that and everything was fine and you don't you don't think about badminton playing. You, do, you think, oh, I'm losing that point. It doesn't matter. But that is also actually a really nice song. But you cannot get that every time if no. you want that. <laughs> it happens sometimes, you know. Yeah, so exactly. Just make it happen in that way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I have a question from Marian. Uh, he's uh, this this one for you, Mark. Uh, reflecting on your performance against Lee Tia, hmm. uh, what are the key things that made him the better player in the match? And would you change anything or are you satisfied and happy with the way you played? Um, first of all, I would change um, some things, yeah. Um, I think the start, I don't know if I can change that, but I want to change that. Um, I was quite nervous in some way because, yeah, even if I was the underdog, you also know you got a feeling you are in a Super Thousand final, oh England. You know you are maybe not the player who have to be there, but still, there's a lot of cameras on you, a lot of people watching. You get a lot of messages. So I was a little bit nervy start. Um, but in general, I think um, I didn't want to change a lot. I know that he is really, yeah, he's way more skillful than me in skill wise. Um, and I think um, what my coach said, I have to play the net, even even I know he's good in that. Um, but that is how we're going to win. We're not going to win it to just play it back without any plan. Yeah. Um, and I try to do that. And I could also feel that 
I was getting better and better in a match. So if yeah. I want to change something, then I want to start from uh, the second game from the beginning. And then, I and then I'm really curious how he's reacting because you could also feel that he was getting a little bit nervous. Um, but I think in general, uh, we play a fine and a good match. And yeah, this is how it is. At that moment, I know that this is how the, uh, this was the maximum what we put out of it. Yeah. Well, you took you took the maximum out of it. That's for sure. That's yeah. no one is taking that from you anymore. No. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Um, totally different questions. I will do a few quick questions. Yeah. Uh, of course, you get some time to think about it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, for the both of you, uh, your toughest opponent. There must uh, be at least one. Yeah, for me, it's at uh, Momota. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, toughest. Uh, well, I think it's uh, Okuhara. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. want to run that long with her now. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's just not the. Uh, I, I like to play another type of, uh, of yeah. playing styles. <laughs> then yeah, her. playing style doesn't fit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, do you guys have a badminton idol? Not for me. Yeah. No. Or a different idol. It can also be not in badminton. It can also be a different idol. Sports idol or a person or... In that way, I think I don't have one specific, but in general, I really like uh, the people who we can see who have to work hard more uh, in a way like uh, Rafael Nadal. If you compare Rafael Nadal and Feder, I'm a huge fan of both and yeah. I really enjoy them both. Yeah. But I just got the feeling that Rafael Nadal has to work so much smarter and he's also doing it than Roger, Roger Feder, who's just talent and he's playing like that. That's the same with Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. I really like them both and I'm a huge fan also of Messi, yeah. but I like the way how Cristiano Ronaldo is doing his job in a, in a, in the field. And um, so I got more affection with those people. Uh, yeah. who have to work really, really hard uh, in that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, I never really had like an idol where I was thinking of, uh, yeah, like a sports idol mm -hmm. or I was looking up to, but yeah. I remember when I was younger, I always liked watching uh, Ratchanak uh, play because of his skills. Um, and yeah, I just, the way she is playing is just, I think, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> One of a kind, I would say, right? Yeah, yeah. One of a kind. Same with Tai Su Ying. But uh, when I was younger, it was something like yeah. yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, biggest dream, sport-wise? Biggest dream. Um, then Olympic gold. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We can uh, we can do Tokyo. We can do Paris. Yeah, Paris. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Um, favorite tournament? For me, it's the Indonesia Open. Indonesia Open? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. It's just more because of the fans. Yeah. I like the All oh, England got the name, mm -hmm. but yeah. the fans make that tournament so special. There's yeah. nothing. I Everybody was saying when I was starting, like, oh, this is amazing, Mark, and you cannot make And I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's not that. And then you, I play actually against Ginting there one time, and yeah, it was just amazing. I just only enjoy, even that he smoked my ass, but yeah. <laughs> I was just enjoying it because, yeah, it's, it is so different than every other tournament. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what makes it also yeah. favorite tournament because <laughs> you know what will, will be there when you are there, the yeah. atmosphere, yeah. and you don't get that anywhere else. Yeah. You feel and like it's a star. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you can't even hear if the coach is saying, oh, no. you know, but you have to go close uh, to, yeah. to the, you know. Yeah, actually, you don't need a coach over there because it makes no sense at the match. <laughs> With plates, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, totally different question again. Uh, do you listen to music before you play matches as a, in the warm up? Yeah, I do. No. Yeah. And it's not like, specific songs it's more just like songs with some uh, power and tempo and yeah, yeah, yeah. just to get the um, <laughs> body going you get your mind ready and yeah like with some beats and 
Ik nou, maar niet meer zeggen. Ja, dan dan de de soft slow song. Yeah, love song. <laughs> oh. That's for after, maybe. Yeah. Alright. Um, favorite shot or shots you're good at? Or you don't want to share? For me, it's a smash. I think I like that. Smash. <laughs> just, just, hit it. just, just hitting it hard. No thinking. Boom. <laughs> um, I think maybe it's uh, if I'm a little bit in the defense in the front court and then in my backhand side, then slice it to the short where people think I'm putting it long. Oh yeah. So when all the way down and then yeah. Yeah. I know right. that's what my uh, <laughs> training partner is saying that that's my special shot. Or... <laughs> so now the players know what to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah, they, go for the net. <laughs> they know what they know what will come, but they still get surprised <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's... All right. Um, let me see. I'm just uh, going through. Oh, this is a maybe. Um, yeah, this is a different question also. Um, what do you usually have for breakfast and lunch if you play in the afternoon? In the afternoon, then. Yeah, you... so if you play late afternoon, because then you have breakfast and lunch. Is there a specific uh, no. also no. A question? No. Like yeah, the in... moment it is really shit because <laughs> there's Corona, so you have to eat breakfast, and yeah, you cannot choose by yourself. True. True. Um, so, uh, but... but I think it's also still different because you never know what's in the breakfast at no. the hotel. Yeah. yeah so it's true. not that you can completely choose. No, but when we are normal normal life um in that way i think it's different for per person what you said uh, depending what you are training but normally i start with yogurt and some eggs and yeah. uh yeah and then and then just see what i'm gonna eat before my match how long it is and that is depending on, uh, on a lot of things yeah of course um i normally eat oatmeal in the morning yeah. um and if i could do that at tournaments i would also do that yeah. and at lunch i eat the uh, Whoopal. Whoopal. <laughs> yeah. um, just dark bread some dark bread uh, with uh, eggs or chicken and i normally also bring that to tournaments uh, because i know that's what i'm used to and um, so i bring the bread to the tournament um, and that's what i'm used to uh, so i try to make it with the routine as much as what i normally do at home but of course it can be really difficult at tournaments and then Of course. It's just what I feel for at the lunch. What I mm -hmm. what do I want today? <laughs> that's actually a good one because if you now go on tournaments and you need to have the, the breakfast and the lunch and dinner that they serve you, there's no choice, right? No, no, no. no. So okay, all right. Um let me see. Um who inspired you to start playing badminton? Mm, for me, it was my brother. Yeah, I'm both brothers, two brothers. Yeah. They play badminton, so I just yeah, you just go into the flow. <laughs> you have actually no choice when you are young because yeah, that is the most of the time when just go to the hall, grab a racket, and then yeah, then you are done actually. Yeah. Um, both my mom and dad had played a little bit. Not they were not good. They played handball and football. Um, but my friends were playing, and I just went with them to the hall to try a training, and then yeah. Just liked it, and it going. Yeah. then, it's, then going. <laughs> it's just one step, take another step, and yeah. Um, this is maybe uh, one that maybe fits a little bit more to Lina, uh, but also for you, Mark. Same question, anyway. Why singles? Because I know Lina, you also play the awesome mixed doubles and yeah. also a double. So, Mark, I don't know so much. You don't think I'm good in the doubles? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Um, but I know from Lena because you were, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I think you were European junior champion in mixed. I am, yeah. With, with Kim? With Kim Astor, yeah. <laughs> good research, good research. Uh, but why singles? Um, yeah, you're not the only one asking. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just think that I always had a better feeling with myself and with the singles. I I like that I'm also only myself on court, that no. if I lose, if I do something wrong, then it's myself. That, for example, if I was playing with Mark and he did something wrong, yeah, it's more then I don't feel that I can change it. And I, if I'm only myself on court, I, I'm the only one who can change it. Yeah, And I really like that. So I think... 
that feeling on court um yeah that was what i was going for and yeah, uh, yeah so that's why it was singles <laughs> your, your own responsibility right exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark, sorry, uh, I don't know if you were. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. Um, no, I think it is just more also the kick. What Lina is saying, uh, you're doing it alone. There's in, yeah more attention. Uh, there, yeah, it's just more the yeah. We see we say it in the NS, the hundred meter sprint in athletics. It's just the uh, king. You know uh, the singles in my eyes. It is just where it is all about, like tennis in my eyes. And uh, yeah, that's why I choose the single. I like that. All right. Um, there's another question. Um, what tension? Yeah, then you can also see what tension do you play with both in the records? Um, do you want that? No. I got 13 in mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, uh, 14, okay. I think, around that sometimes. So yeah. it's 13 and all 14. Uh, yeah. it's, it's just interesting because you know, you always hear, yeah, 16 and ping, ping, ping. The yeah. louder it is, the, the better. Yeah, actually, <laughs> the, the Yonex springing guy said to me, one time that it really doesn't matter if you have third between 12 or 12 and 16 it doesn't matter what you got okay. in your record yeah uh, it's just only for your own feelings <laughs> yeah, yeah that's also, that's also true yeah. <laughs> all right um to wrap it i'll wrap it up i'll have one more question hmm? did the whole COVID situation change uh your training your lifestyle of course it changed but did you try and stick to your, you know, as good as you could to some some routines that you always have been doing, or did it completely threw everything that it was chaos? Um, I think, yeah. I think in the beginning, yeah, it was a little bit chaos. Um, I'm a type who really likes routines. I like the planning. I like to know how my week is seeing, how my, all my week is seeing and next day and next day and next day. I'm not really good for the unpredictable. Yeah. Um, so in that, it was really hard to, yeah, sit here at home and yeah. there was just no training. So yeah. what to do now? But then it was just try to do as normal as you can um do some training at home eat like you normally do try to have the normal life even though you weren't going to training just to have the goal also to set for yourself that you try to do the same as normal even though that it's not normal <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Yeah. yeah still trying to keep up with the routines as good as you yeah. can yes. yeah for you mark is it the same uh, no, actually not. I, in the beginning of Corona, I think I was quite happy in some way. Uh, we, I have a crazy year, crazy year with Olympic tra traveling. So uh, yeah. then we get some rest. And then first of all, I did three or four weeks with my guy, with the guys and friends playing football outside, and yes. yeah, just enjoyed that. And at one point, I was thinking like, okay, maybe this is not that professional. <laughs> um, but in some way, you are really active with your friends as well because we are coming a lot of outside. We are still running a lot and we're doing a lot of things together. But exactly what Lina is saying, you have to be really careful also, uh, even if people now don't play a tournament, to keep yourself motivated um, is also a hard part in it. So I think you also have to take your rest or do something with your friends in some part because now mm -hmm. it is for us a little bit more easy to say, because we are playing but i know also players in the netherlands or something like that yeah just take them a week off if you feel better for that at that moment it's not always good to go go and going going and going i think um for sure i'm the type also who really train hard and something like that so it is affect me in some way re really hard actually corona but i also learned that you also overtrained is also something what you can be actually, and uh, then you're not getting better. Um, I think what it also showed was that I think we didn't train for there was no training for two months or mm. something here. Yeah. But when we came back, it was not like we felt that we had been away for two months. It was the same as I was on holiday for for one week. Mm. Um, and I think also that for me normally I'm thinking Phew, one week away, I cannot move when I'm coming back, and yeah, yeah. but. It also showed in a good way that okay it's fine just to take a week off if you get the body back um yeah also mentally because it's not that it's making the biggest change no. um yeah 
all right um okay. yeah i'm also asking because of course in uh, in slovakia there's of course uh, there's still many that can't play so is there any advice for the young ones to from your sides uh, from you both of course uh to how can you say to keep them sane in these hard times yeah, yeah. i think it is it is really difficult so it's not easy to say something now and this then you can get it tomorrow but yeah. i I feel, I really believe that you also have to enjoy, but enjoy also in a way like be active. So do some other things what you, instead of yeah. all the time, a home workout from YouTube, it is, I know it is good for yourself, but just yeah. do something out with something else and just watch some nice badminton back from yourself. If it is possible, some good matches and get that feeling a little bit. And also in training wise, if you can train, um, yeah, don't be too hard for yourself all the time uh, because, yeah, you don't know what is going on now and when you're going to play. And, um, yeah, I think it is just a little bit try to enjoy more things, even if it is harder this time. And I know it is hard. You cannot play a match, but just also if you don't feel for it sometimes, just be honest also to your coach or something else. And, hey, I'm a me mentally off. And then I think the coach also will say like, okay, just take a day off if you can, if you not can play a tournament of it is in the right period. But I think you also have to be really careful, careful, especially mentally in this period mm -hmm. if you don't play matches. And I don't there is a key point, but yeah, I think you just have to. What I said, be also care. Don't be too hard for yourself in this period. Yeah, it's also the time, you know, to maybe focus on different things than exactly, um, yeah. on the badminton, then focus yeah. on different yeah. aspects to develop, of course, yourself. Yeah. Exactly. And exactly, I think what Lina also said, try still get in a kind of routine mm. that is also important. So don't, I don't want to say with enjoy that you don't have to think about it anymore, but just still think about it, but be also in a good way, maybe focus a little bit on something else more, but still have in your mind that it is it is also maybe coming really soon back. We don't know. No yeah. one knows. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I'm just quickly, I'm, I'll wrap it up. Um, I'm just quickly looking at the screen to see if anyone has a really important question to ask. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to raise your hand. Uh, and then I'll give you the mic. I'm just quickly looking. No, no one, no one dares, I think. No one there, or maybe I already covered everything. That's also possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, then, uh, yeah, you were both awesome. Uh, and thank you so much for, for <laughs> and taking the time. Uh, I, think, I think we all learned a lot. Um, we hope so. <laughs> yeah, we will, of course, also follow you. Uh, of course, I've known you both a little bit longer, so I'll be following <laughs> sure for the tournaments and wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Uh, I speak for most of the players uh, to thank you also for your time and uh, sharing your experiences uh, with us tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take bye care. Bye. 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 <laughs>